Hello and welcome to our special coverage of the RBI policy. There's about 16 minutes left to go for the decision from the uh, MPC. The RBI is scheduled to announce its rate decision uh, very, very soon. Remember the backdrop, global growth is slowing uh, and uh, Indian growth, of course, has been uh, slowing very, very sharply as well. But on the other hand, inflation is on the rise. I mean, uh, it's expected that for the month of November, inflation should cross about 5%. So low growth, inflation picking up, I mean, it does put the RBI in a pretty tough spot. But uh, we, uh, I mean, the CBC TV 18 economists and bankers poll is expecting a 25 basis point uh, rate cut broadly. Uh, let's actually set the context up. My colleague Ritu conducted the poll and she's joining in with the findings of uh, what the survey actually shows. Ritu, over to you. The Monetary Policy Committee of the RBI is widely expected to cut rates for the sixth consecutive time this year as it looks to support weak economic growth. Now, 90% of the economists that we poll said that they expect a 25 basis point cut, which will bring the repo rates down to 4.9% from 5.15% currently. Now, 60% expect this cut to be the last one for the current financial year, but 30% are expecting a 40 basis point cut before the close of the financial year. Now, with the September quarter GDP growth, growth hitting a six-year low. Half our respondents to the poll said that they expect this FY20 GDP growth forecast to be revised downwards to 55 to 6 percent and the other half expect it to be lowered even further. Now RBI is also expected to lower its FY21 GDP growth forecast. 50 percent are expecting it to be lowered anywhere between 65 to 7 percent and it is this flagging growth that is likely to be the key driver for the MPC to cut rates yet again despite the CPI inflation reaching the 4%, the sacrosanct 4% target for the first time since July 2018. All our respondents expect the 3.5 uh, to 3.7% CPI forecast for the second half of this year to be raised and 90% expect the CPI forecast for the first quarter of next year to be raised from 3.6% that is currently the projection. Now all of the economists that we polled also expect the NPC to look through this rise in inflation above the 4% mark because the rise in food prices is largely seen as a transient factor. The tone of the policy is also expected to be similar to what we saw in the month of October. So while the MPC's mandate is inflation targeting, it will have to be a balancing act this time around between that and supporting growth. Okay, absolutely, Ritu. Let's see what our experts have lined up in terms of opinion ahead of the policy. Kaushik Das of Deutsche Bank and Kamal Mahajan of Bank of Baroda are with us. Uh, Kaushik and Mr. Mahajan, welcome to the show. Uh, well, Kaushik, let's start with you. Uh, consensus is going with around a 25 basis points rate cut. What are you expecting and what is the probability of, say, a 50 basis points? Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, we are going with the 25 basis points rate cut, but I will not, you know, uh, you know, uh, not entertain the possibility that there can be a higher uh, rate cut of 35 basis points. I don't think RBI goes to 50 basis points in this policy because, as you mentioned, that inflation has gone up and is expected to be above 5 percent in November. Uh, but you know, 25 percent is already priced in by the market. So if it just comes at 25, there'll be no surprise for the market. So as a surprise element, 35 basis points is possible. Uh, on growth, we see, uh, you know, a forecast being revised downwards. Uh, RBI had given a forecast of 5.3 for July, September, which has already come at 4.5 percent. So there's a 80 basis points uh, downshoot. So we think growth could come down to five and a half or between five to five and a half is what RBI will project. Our own forecast is 5% for FI20 and then improving to about 6.2% in FI21. Inflation, uh, RBI had projected 3.5 to 3.7 percent for the second half of FY20. I think that forecast would be revised up by 80 to 100 basis points higher. And April, June, uh, RBI had given a forecast of 3.6 percent. That could go up to about 4 percent uh, in this new forecast that RBI will provide. Basically, RBI should look through the current inflation prints for a few months, which will remain, you know, close to 5 percent. And then inflation should be back at 4 percent in April, June. So if you take a six month to nine month view inflation is firmly within four percent core inflation is at 3.5 percent wpi core inflation is negative at 1.7 percent minus and you know that the manufacturing sector is already you know exhibiting recessionary trends so from this standpoint i think rbi can go ahead with a rate cut of 25 probably a little bit more at 35 
and we think the terminal repo rate can come down to as much as 450 uh, from 515 today so 65 basis points rate cut possible including the 25 basis points that we expect today mm. Uh, so look through RBI is uh, Kaushik is saying look through this uh, transit which, uh, what he calls transient uh, sort of inflation spike and do 35. Uh, Temur Beg is with us as well managing director and chief economist at DBS group research. Temur would you agree with Kaushik Das? Of course, my former colleague and Kaushik, we never would disagree. <laughs> um, so I think that uh, by and large, uh, it's uh, all hands on deck in India right now. Uh, the government at the center is trying to do whatever it takes. And RBI is fully in line with the government to do whatever it takes. So whether it is, you know, large scale rate cuts, 25 this week, uh, today, uh, 25 in the next meeting. So 50 more in FY20 and perhaps even announcing asset purchase programs to help the long end of the yield curve. I think everything is on the cards and I think the market is also expecting um, you know sort of all hands on deck type measures not just incremental rate cuts but uh, far more aggressive uh, mixture of uh, yield curve management and asset purchases and interest rate cuts. This policy uh, Taimur? I mean uh, the asset purchases uh, that you're talking about essentially to bring down the long end of the curve? Right. So, I mean, we have seen very little change in the prime lending rate and we have seen substantial decline in the policy rate. So, the gap between sort of the market-based interest rates and the policy rate has widened substantially. Uh, this, of course, reflects the stress we see in the NBFC sector, lingering problems with the banking sector and so on. Um, now, of course, there is, you cannot, you know, make the horse drink water. Uh, you can take the horse toward the water. At the end of the day, Indian corporates and households have to borrow or would have to have the confidence to borrow. Otherwise, no matter how much you cut rates and no matter how many asset purchases you carry out, it just won't happen. So therein lies the cautionary uh, element to this dynamic. As I said, RBI right now is in emergency mode and it will do uh, many, many things and ignore inflation as, as Koshik had uh, alluded to earlier. But at what cost? Uh, would it end up, you know, liquefying the system so much that we create zombification si situation where companies stay in business that should not be in business? Uh, we see banks flush with cash that they just park at central bank and nothing else. So that's the sort of there is no free lunch, if you will. But before we consider the free lunch, let the lunch arrive first. Okay. And therefore, the first step is far more easing measures from the RBI. Okay. All right. Uh, Temur, you know, I want to come back to you about uh, what specific measures you expect besides maybe an RBI policy rate cut. But uh, we have Mr. Kamil Mahajan of Bank of Baroda with us. Uh, Mr. Mahajan, that was the opinion that we got from an economist earlier in the morning as well, that uh, liquidity surplus and a rate cut is probably not going to cut it anymore. And we probably need something more from the Reserve Bank of India. Uh, what is it in terms of steps that we could probably see or would, which you would like to see uh, to boost, say, credit growth? Okay. Uh, as far as liquidity is concerned, it is quite ample in the system. Um, the inflation numbers are little disturbing, but yes, if you look at core inflation, that's fine and it is coming down. WPI is down. Looking at that, maybe RBI would like to be a little cautious in bringing down the repo rate further. But yes, on the other side, if we look at GDP numbers, they are coming down by 50 to 80 basis points down every quarter. So that uh, increases the headroom for RBI to go in for a larger repo cut that could be even 50. But then what coming directly to the question, what is important right now is the transmission of it is not happening and that is most important. Repo itself is just an indicator. So if that transmission despite now liquidity happening is not happening, so we will have to find some, some other ways to otherwise this um, rate cut of 50 basis points or 25 basis points would not be uh, fruitful. So for that perhaps uh, maybe more uh, Mm, uh, more uh, 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 RBI can speak about uh, future, better future and they can give further comfort that we will uh, 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 we will be giving li enough liquidity in future and also maybe they come out with some OMOs otherwise I feel that there is not much to do about except for reducing the, MC and, and the uh, repo rates to maybe 25 or 35 basis points balancing all the three points. Mm. Uh, so Kaushik, back to you, <coughs> the 10-year uh, yield remains pretty much around the same levels where 
uh, it, it was when the policy rate was 6 percent. So, I mean, and, and that is the point which both uh, Taimur and Mr. Mahajan especially have been making. So, for transmission to take place, what, what uh, do you expect anything today? Kaushik. So, a uh, couple of things on transmission. Uh, on the GSEC side, you know that we have a fiscal uh, problem in the sense there is a lot of uncertainty whether the fiscal target will be met or not and there is a demand supply problem in the fixed income market because you have supplies of bonds hitting you but not enough demand from say the banks are not buying enough bonds and therefore you have the tenure uh, still staying at 650 when your policy rate is at 515 ideally it should have been close to 6 percent so one option would be to you know probably have something like a bigger participation of foreign investors into the local currency market and that can happen through say possibly an announcement of index inclusion but this is not something which RBI or this MPC will be announcing today I think that's a better approach of getting more demand for buying those bonds and yields can come down. Uh, the other you know, option is what people are talking about whether RBI can do uh, open market operation purchase bonds in an environment where we already have excess liquidity. In that case, the liquidity framework report, if you remember, which came out a few months back, that has to be rewritten completely because that re report kind of indicated that RBI doesn't want to distort the market by doing open market operations or do yield management uh, using open market operations. They only want to do open market purchases when there is a liquidity shortfall. So, so something has to give. I don't expect any announcement of that sort in this uh, MPC uh, meeting because the MPC generally doesn't have a remit uh, apart from talking about the repo rate and growth and inflation. But if RBI has to do that, they can do that any day uh, without even this policy uh, meeting and that can come at some point of uh, time. Okay. Uh, Temur, coming back to you then, what are those specific <coughs> measures that you would probably expect? All would want. Um, so, right. I mean, okay. So, want and expect are two different things. Uh, <laughs> in terms of expectation, of course, you know, downward revision of growth, upward revision of inflation forecast, uh, then some sort of a you know a framework to help uh, encourage credit growth, and some sort of a guidance of the NBFC crisis. I think those are the four pillars of areas that I would like to see, and I would expect to see things play out. But as far as you know, wish list, uh, that's where the issue of quantitative easing comes in. That you know, in the last ten years, you know, developed country central banks have already shown us. The path. If you want to impact the entire yield curve, there are ways to do that, especially if you are a large issuer of local currency liabilities, which is what the government of India is. I fully agree with Koshik's uh, concern that fiscal situation, something that RBI is a bit too quiet about these days, needs to be also taken mm -hmm. into account. Uh, that the fiscal risks are substantial, revenues have been very, very disappointing, and expenditure, of course, is keeping pace just to make sure that uh, growth it will, it, it remains in some semblance of 4 or 5%, not like 3% or so. So the uh, point of the matter is right now, if it's just going to follow the old rule book, the RBI should be prudent and be very incremental. Mm -hmm. My point is that you know the pa time for old rule book has well and truly passed us. It is all hands on deck time. All okay. uh, absolutely. I think uh, at least the equity market uh, would want that. And I think I mean you know uh, markets, financial markets generally would have that opinion that probably just going by that old rule book is uh, uh, is, is, is there's ne there needs to be more. I mean uh, some uh, some more needs to be done rather than just another incremental uh, 25 basis points. Already we've had 135 basis points, but how much of that has actually translated into I mean, lending activity picking up, credit actually really flowing to people who need it, institutions which need it. I mean, those are problems. Bhaskar Panda of HDFC Bank is with us. Bhaskar, thank you for your time. Uh, what, are your, what are your expectations? And I mean, we've been discussing uh, essentially, of course, what do you expect, but also how do you achieve this transmission? Hi, uh, I think transmission is a you know topic which has been uh, being discussed for quite some time, and uh, uh, takes a lot of you know doing to uh, get it to the ultimate uh, you know consumer. What I'm expecting from the uh, MPC is that I am uh, little uh, you know more than uh, what 25 basis points most of the people are talking about. I am actually expecting something like say 50 basis point cut in the MPC just to give an indication that uh, uh, you know flagging economy is going to be uh, you know uh, given some direction from the central bank itself so i am expecting around uh, 50 basis point cut in the report rate also i think uh, they will uh, uh, 
keep the uh, <coughs> CRR uh, at uh, unchanged at 4%. Uh, they have to give the guidance on, uh, you know, uh, forward guidance on the growth, uh, so on and so forth. So a lot of things are expected from this MPC at least. Okay, yes, absolutely. A lot is expected in terms of commentary. Uh, Kaushik, we don't have much time left, so just a brief answer. If in case, uh, less than a minute, so do you expect a change in maybe the po the accommodative stance if in case there's a 50 basis points rate cut? Uh, we expect a commodative stance to remain unchanged for a prolonged period of time. Uh, whether it is 35, whether it is 50, whether it is 25, the stance doesn't change. What India needs is lower interest rates for a long period of time, probably about 12, 18 months. You need to keep real you know, interest rates at whatever level you want to keep at, 4.5, 475. So we don't expect a change in stance. We expect this accommodative stance to continue for a long okay. period of time. All right, Kaushik. Well, we have to now concentrate on the screen because uh, it's just a couple of seconds away from the last monetary policy for 2019 and the sixth monetary policy for this entire year. But uh, nonetheless, for the markets right now, the Bank Nifty holding up steady, up around 3 tenths of a percent. We have the yield, which is absolutely stable at this point, 6.46, 6.45, thereabout in, those, in terms of those levels. So as of now, absolutely static. Remember, consensus is at 25 basis points rate cut this time. It's already 135 basis points rate cut, which we've already got in 2019. So let's see whether they top it up in terms of a Christmas gift or not. We should probably be getting the flashes soon. We should be getting the flashes soon enough. It is 11.45 a.m. in terms of the clock. For the Nifty, 12,068 is where we are at, up around 25 points. We have the mid-cap index, which is up around 19 odd points, and the bank Nifty, which is up around 92 odd points at this point in time. Advanced decline ratio holding up steady, markets holding up steady. At this point, we're just about waiting for the RBI decision in terms of the policy at this point. <laughs> I mean, just waiting by, uh, Ita, the flash would appear any time now. Uh, so as you said, I mean, the market has actually suddenly given up gains. That typically happens, uh, I mean, a fair bit of positioning okay, as I well. Okay, I think we've got uh, the, the policy. News. It's unchanged. Uh, it's, it's status quo. So the RBI has left the repo rate unchanged at 5.15%. So that's completely a surprise wow. in terms of what was expected. The MPC has maintained its policy stance at accom accommodative. They've cut the GDP forecast as well. We have uh, Lata with us. So let's go across to Lata. Well, Lata, it's a complete surprise. No, shock. That's the word. Uh, absolutely no change in policy rates and uh, very important to point out that uh, uh, the way in which growth has been scaled down, it has been scaled down to 5% for the current year. For the second half, the growth uh, forecast is 4.9 to 5.5% and for next year, first half, 5.9 to 6.3. So they are not expecting growth to go above 6% thereabouts for one year henceforth, you know, up until September. Inflation, very important, they've obviously scaled it up and the expectation is that inflation in the current uh, first uh, second half will be between 5.1 and 4.7. That's a far cry from the 3.6 that they had earlier. So a full one and a half percentage point higher inflation. And for the second half, they are, uh, uh, sorry, for the next year first half, they are expecting 4% to 3.8. So that 4% mark is going to be reached only in the first half next year. This year up until March, you are above the MPC target. And that looks like the big reason why there has been no change. I will just read the operational lines why probably this stance has been, this change has been taken or this uh, action or non-action. Stance meanwhile is very accommodative. Okay, in the judgment of the MPC, inflation is rising in the near term, but it is likely to moderate below target by second quarter 2021. So second quarter 2021 is, you know, July of uh, 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 2020. It is therefore prudent to carefully monitor incoming data to gain clarity on the inflation outlook. So clearly it appears to be that inflation is the reason why they are not cutting. Similarly, the forthcoming union budget will provide greater insight into further measures to be undertaken by the government and their impact on growth. But this is a very soft uh, accommodative stance and I am reading it. The MPC recognizes there is monetary policy space for future action. 
it means that there is space to cut. However, given the evolving growth inflation dynamics, the MPC felt it appropriate to take a pause at this juncture. According to the MPC, accordingly the MPC decided to keep the policy repo rate unchanged and continue with the accommodative stance as long as it is necessary to revive growth while ensuring that inflation remains within the target. So, steep about almost 2 percentage point, uh, okay, 1 percentage point cuts to growth and 1.5 percentage point hike to the inflation trajectory, no action, but it is a pause further action expected, not much by way of developmental, those of you who are expecting TARP and stuff like that, there is nothing. It says that cooperative banks are going to get a new uh, regime of uh, pre, you know, uh, exposure limits to connected groups etc. Those rules will be issued. Also large cooperative banks will be part of the acrylic. Those rules will also come. And then there are largely cyber security and such kind of, uh, there is uh, such kind of rules. Uh, Self-regulatory body is going to be set up for secondary market and there is some relaxation for those who have banking units in the gift city etc. But those are small things. The big part is the shock. So let me straight away go to uh, 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 who do we have with us? Uh, Taimur, uh, your reaction? Yes, sir. Well, talk about uh, taking the punch ball away, Lata. Uh, I, I can't remember the last time there has been such a resounding you know, uh, surprise as far as the RBI decision is concerned. Um, look, uh, it, it uh, sort of defies the, uh, the, the so expectation of the market and also the body language of the RBI over the last six months or so when they seemed uh, amenable toward out-of-the-box thinking and being very uh, proactive in terms of supporting growth. So I will restrict my comment to saying that yes, after a very long time, RBI has truly surprised me. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, they have not shut the door. They are clearly saying it's a pause and they will look at incoming data. Uh, so first thoughts from you, uh, uh, Mr. Panda, how will the bond yields move? Are you expecting a sharp uh, rise in bond yields? Okay, uh, Kaushik Das, let me come to you. What are you expecting henceforth uh, from the RBI? What is your terminal repo rate now? Yeah, hi. So we have a terminal repo rate of four and a half. We don't see any reason to change that. Uh, this yeah. is a temporary pause because inflation okay. has gone up uh, close to 4.6 in October, might go up to uh, 5.3 in November. But remember, RBI has already given 135 basis points and back-to-back -back five policies. So one policy they waiting out is not yeah. a big deal. I think there would be more rate cuts coming in 2020, about 50, 60 basis points from here. As inflation starts coming down towards 4% okay. again by April, June. Okay. 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 Uh, we also have Kamal Mahajan with us. Uh, uh, Mr. Mahajan, uh, big relief, I guess, for banks like yours. You all were linked to the repo rate. Now there is no need to change. I mean, an improvement in margins. How do you see the uh, action? Or do you think that because you have so much of deposits, you will cut because of lack of demand? Yeah, the, the fact is that uh, transmission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the fact is that transmission has not happened, and it always happens with lag. So we will still believe that MCLR, the normal MCLR, is likely to come down because the growth is not there. YOI growth is there, but in this year the growth is not there, and uh, uh, credit is simply not picking up. And uh, of course, what has happened is cost of deposit also has term deposit has not come down. But we believe that since it is with the lag, the previous cuts will still have keep the momentum and we believe that uh, MCLRs can come down further down and if MCLR comes down maybe repo linked also banks will like to cre uh, reduce their spread okay. because in the market the liquidity okay. because of the liquidity market linked bonds their rates yeah. are coming down and there is a direct competition to loans to that yeah, yeah. So no, we actually, believe the RBI that, uh, is admitting yes, that a lot of uh, transmission has happened. Uh, Mr. Mahajan, no, Mr. Mahajan, let me just finish uh, reading out since uh, the governor will start speaking. Uh, there is a 137 basis points transmission in the corporate uh, in the uh, corporate bond market, uh, in the money market, and in the corporate bond market, it's a 218 basis point transmission. They are saying for the three month CPs. As well, if you look at the one year MCLR loans, one year median. There is a 49 basis, which means a half a percentage point of transmission is there. It is only in the total outstanding weighted average uh, loans that uh, the transmission is actually 
not there at all. It's up uh, two basis points. Uh, but uh, be that as it may, you know, now time mood, what are your growth? Uh, it looks like RBI is at the moment decided that we are not going to make any efforts uh, to uh, kindle growth. Uh, whatever effort has been taken, let that take root first. So what are your growth forecasts? 5% do you think is a fair estimate of the RBI? Well, I mean, I think the downside risk to that five has also risen with the latest set of data, especially the current data that we got last week. So our now cast for the okay. October, December quarter is was showing something in the range of 4.8 till about three weeks ago, and now it's showing hitting in the low fours. So again, another 4.2, 4.3 quarters seem to be in the offing. If that is the case, then the FY20 number would be less than five. Okay. Well, by the way, they have cut their uh, FY21 number as well. Now stands at 5.9 to 6.3. Uh, Mr. Rao, you must have heard all the main things. No change for you. What are, what are your first thoughts? Even though it is a little, uh, what is called, uh, outside the expectation of the market, but 5.15 being maintained is a good thing. The reason is 135 basis points cuts during the current year. It has to take certain time to transmit properly into the credit growth. There is also one more point like demand not being there, that is the reason why credit is not growing. So all these things uh, will settle down instead of again changing, probably RBI has done a good thing to continue the rate. So at the end of the year, probably the next time when they come, there could be some rate cut uh, at the end of the financial year. Okay, just want to point out that uh, it's been quite volatile for the market since uh, the RBI decision because the markets did not really expect uh, no rate cut this time round. So the consensus was 25 basis points. So if you just pull up the bank nifty, that's prob uh, probably where maximum number um, of uh, the cuts have come through. So for the bank nifty, it's recovered from the day's low. It's still down around three tenths to two tenths of a percent now. It's recovered. So there's some sort of buying which has taken place at lower levels probably because of the accommodative stance and the bullish or uh, you know the pro growth you know, outlook Koshik that they have. Out, uh, this, is a, uh, this is a shock right I mean mm. uh, some forget 35, 50, I mean 25 everybody was expecting and our poll was throwing up 90% of those we polled said 25 and so the the market is actually barely reacted nothing I mean there was a it's bit recovered. of volatility it's recovered yeah. yeah but you know after a no cut uh, mm. the market is almost in the green I mean half a point change it's actually, it's actually in the green look at the nifty it's come back into the green and you've got the nifty which is down 0.19 percent so uh, you know uh, well uh, uh, Kaushik you said that uh, RBI has just taken the punch bowl away uh, that doesn't seem like it Hello, oh, was that Temur? Sorry. Uh, really yeah, expecting sorry. RBI. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, market was clearly market was clearly expecting uh, a rate cut. It didn't come. But what market will latch on to is expectations of future rate cut. And you know, market always you know reacts on the basis of expectations. So what RBI said is that we are not doing it this time, mm -hmm. but the space remains, and we'll wait for the fiscal uh, numbers or the data, the budget, and then we'll take a call how much to cut. And you know, so therefore expectations have not gone away. I think RBI will cut again as inflation starts coming down. You wouldn't expect tomato and onion prices to keep on going up month on month. At some time it has to fall from 100 to back to 20 rupees or 30 rupees that we are used to. And then you'll see a huge fall in you know inflation in that particular month. And then expectations of future rate cuts again will start coming in. So I'm not worried about RBI pausing in this policy as long as they are kind of completely uh, indicating clearly that there will be further rate cuts going forward. Okay. Well, you know, one of the things that we haven't pointed out as yet is that all six MPC members, in fact, voted in favor of the decision. They voted in favor of keeping rates status quo this time. So that's an important uh, piece of news to track as well. But uh, uh, Mr. Marjan, I wanted your thoughts in terms of transmission now. Uh, we've heard that there is room for transmission, further transmission. What do you expect in the second half now? Certainly, the accommodative stance is still there, so the intention is there. The way the numbers of GDP are coming, yes, there is a room uh, for um, uh, further uh, cut down. The only thing is perhaps the pause is because of two reasons. One is the transmission has not happened, which is ultimately the ultimate the goal. Maybe the focus would be now on that. And plus, as inflation numbers are expected to come down, it's not that we are structurally the economy is heating up. E economy is certainly not heating up. So we, 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 we believe that there is further room and um, maybe in next two policies, we 
we we get rate cuts mm -hmm. okay i just want to pull, pull up the bond also the 10 year bond and let's see whether there's any sort of reaction which has come through there remember that before the policy the 10 year yield was at around 6.46 uh, so now it's spiked up it's in fact hardened all the way to around 6.58 so this is obviously because of the lack of a rate cut which has come through uh, mr panda what's your uh, reading the yield has hardened all the way to 6.58 what's it factoring in I was uh, first of all I was very surprised uh, about keeping it on change and uh, since it is six zero so I mean uh, I, I really don't know I mean what has gone through the mind of the people but uh, the stance itself uh, says that there is a possibility of uh, uh, rate cut coming in the uh, you know in the next uh, uh, probably a policy meeting or so. Uh, and uh, uh, as to the bond prices, obviously, I mean bond yields. Obviously, it is uh, uh, got dis disappointment from the, uh, I mean, no rate cut call from the RBI, and this is the reaction, direct reaction to that only. So I don't think it is going to go be uh, beyond 660 on the 10 year. Uh, I think it will remain between this. Uh, this is the first reaction to the. You know, no rate cut from the RBI. Okay, uh, the governor is starting uh, with his team to uh, get ready to address the media. He'll, as always, as is the protocol, read out the short statement, and then uh, I mean uh, he'll proceed to take questions as well. Let's cut across. Okay. Okay. Thing. <laughs> yeah, it has to be something different, no? <laughs> Okay, I think that's enough. Thank you. Should I put this also? Not necessary. Hello. Okay, so uh, we're just waiting by for the RBI governor to start and address, uh, start addressing the press conference. I'm sure there'll be a lot of... to everyone. Uh, I will uh, first uh, read out my statement after which we will entertain uh, questions and uh, other 